thank you all. Uh, I know it's winding down on the second day, and uh, <clears throat> I've heard that some people may have uh, had bourbon uh, yesterday and maybe even today. So uh, anyway, this is uh, Surviving a Teleporter Accident. I'm Jack Daniel. Um, when I do talks like this, I probably shouldn't put the company I work for, but I work for Tenable. Um, I have a bunch of letters after my name. Uh, yeah, wow. <clears throat> So, let's start with this. I know it's not Christmas, but this is a great lead-in. Um, if you don't know about the red shirt, uh, <laughs> the red shirts in the original Star Trek, uh, and, and most of them, um, had a pretty low survival rate. Uh, they tended to get uh, beamed down and uh, beamed back in bits if they came back at all. But, uh, come on, you can do it, Jack. It could happen to you. Don't you hate it when you're uh, someplace minding your own business and you're in a familiar place, you're where you belong, and you know what time it is, you know what year it is, and somehow you end up in a strange place. You end up wrong time zone, maybe the wrong century. It's just uh, it's a little disconcerting. And uh, it's, it's not just teleporters we have to watch out for, these stupid Stargate things and Frickin' Harry Potter kid and his stupid port keys all over the place. So you can find yourself, uh, uh, you can find yourself in some odd positions, uh, unfortunately. And it's not always easy. Sometimes the trip is a little uh, harder than others, and we uh, do, uh, maybe the teleport's not quite as smooth. A couple of things I've noticed through the years, uh, it is more likely in some places than others. For those of you familiar with the Bay Area, this is from the uh, Tonga Room. Uh, it's strange. Uh, when I visit the Tonga Room, I end up in strange places. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, the correlation, but there's something about the basement of the Fairmont Hotel. Uh, there are some other places around here that I've heard uh, can transport you, uh, trigger things uh, that are there. And then one of the most dangerous uh, places that I've heard of, and it's actually not the bourbon that induces the teleportation, it's the Kool-Aid here that transports you into another place. Um, yeah. So anyway, you've been teleported. You're someplace. You don't know where you are. Now what? Uh, one of the greatest books ever written had the uh, perfect advice for this. The Hitchhiker's Guide was correct. Don't panic. In big blue friendly letters. But let's, let's stop and think about it. Stop and uh, look for immediate danger. What's going to kill me now? What's going to end this adventure really fast and probably in an unpleasant way? Look around. Is anything going to kill me? Nothing about to kill you? Let's step back a little bit and see if there are threats that are close to us, but they're not immediate. And at that point in time, really, all you can do is pick the right direction and run. Uh, there's not much we can do. So if this is what you're greeted with, uh, if you can tiptoe away, great. Uh, you're not going to outrun them, but uh, you just got to land someplace and see if it's even viable. But assuming that you don't get eaten on landing, uh, where are you? What are the conditions you're in? Look around, explore a little bit. You're in a new place. Um, you're probably feeling the effects of Kool-Aid or possibly bourbon or fruity rum drinks. Uh, so explore just a little bit and uh, note where you are and keep track of where you go and what you find. Make sure you can find your way back. So uh, let's look. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is actually a great place to be, not because it's a tropical island, because, you know, rescue will come quickly, uh, because you just have to wait for the real estate developers to find and evict you. So uh, that's pretty nice. This... Um, Pre-built housing. There's some promise there. There's some real promise there. Uh, Pre-built housing. Uh, this one doesn't look so promising. Although if Johnny's around, he probably might have a different uh, opinion for some people. But this actually isn't that bad. The key here is to look at where you are and look at what might be available to you. Uh, this obviously is flooded, so there is water. There's a little bit of vegetation. There's a tree that actually looks like it might kind of be healthy a little farther away in hills or mountains. So this really isn't as bad as it looks at first glance. Uh, I mean, it's it's no Louisville, but it's all right. Uh, if you land in a place like this, you might as well find a way to kill yourself, because this is no place for a sentient human being. 
This is just, yeah. Um, so you're still alive. You've done a little bit of reconnaissance. You've looked around. So let's start out with what's, what do you have with you? Uh, what's in your pockets? Uh, thankfully, the TSA keeps us from ever traveling with a Leatherman or anything useful. But uh, maybe you maybe you picked one up. Maybe you've got some stuff in your pocket. Maybe you have your backpack with you. Uh, if you're in a reasonably safe place, let's spread out what we've got and see what I've got available. What's in my pockets? What's in my backpack? And let's spread it out and think about it. And if you are walking around to find anything handy, to find something that drifted up on the beach, find anything useful, let's kind of sort our stuff and see where it goes. Um, let's kind of break it down a little bit. What's immediately useful? What can I do something about right now? What can I do something? What's useful but not right now? What's a kind of maybe thing? Then you get down into the probably useless and then the useless stuff that we're carrying around. There's useless stuff that we're carrying around. Um, it's just human nature, but why are we carrying it now? That's kind of a good question that's unrelated to this, but uh, you've got to think about what has value to you and what that value is. And then you have to do a little more sorting because good stuff comes in different categories. So there's expendable stuff. If you have a cell phone that acts as a flashlight, the battery in there, those of us that have removable batteries can pop a battery out. It'll last longer. We need to treat batteries different than food or fuel. Is it perishable? Will it go bad on its own? Will it degrade over time? Is it durable? Or is it a tool that requires maintenance? Or is it something that's pretty basic? Lasting stuff, tools, containers. How do you maintain it? How do you protect those? Is there, what do you need to protect these things? Because it looks like we're someplace where you can't call room service to solve your problems. So, uh, for those of us that are old enough, or if you've seen it, George Carlin does a, did a bit on, uh, we all need a place for our stuff. And as you travel, the stuff you take gets smaller and smaller in your space. We need a place for stuff. So we've sorted all this stuff out. We've kind of thought about what, what we have to protect and how we have to protect it. We need to find a place for it. And we need to factor in that safe storage means different things depending on what we're storing. So, as I said, a box of matches requires being kept dry, unless they're the really cool uh, camp matches that don't. Uh, you know, turn things off, pull the batteries out, wrap things. Just uh, think about what it is and think about what it takes to uh, store those things safely so that you can use them when you need them, but protect them when you don't. So we're still not dead, no lions, nothing horrible. Let's start planning for long-term survival because that would be a good idea. We're not dead yet. Uh, it would be a good idea to keep that condition going. Um, it's interesting, uh, humans, uh, you know, animals tend to be programmed to stay alive. Uh, let's look at that. So, again, the dangers, we're going to start looking for further dangers beyond the really obvious stuff, beyond the lions and tigers. Immediate, likely, potential, remote, and we kind of think about the severity of those consequences, too. So, is this a minor nuisance, or is this immediate life-threatening? Well, if it's malaria, it's not immediate life-threatening, but it's life-threatening, and it's really unpleasant. So things, you know, that could be eastern equine and cephalitis if you're in the northeast where I am. There, you just have to worry about these and think about what the risk is. And you have to kind of err on the side of caution. If you don't know where you are, you've got to be kind of careful with mosquitoes. Fighting bugs can be nasty. Uh, expand your horizons. Wander farther from where you started out. Don't get lost. Keep track of where you are. Don't forget what you already know. Look out for danger, but also look for food and water and tools and other things that are available to you that maybe take a little bit more work to get to, but you can do them. Look for shelter. Keep things in perspective. Don't freak out. Um, keep track of where you've been. Mark paths to dangers. Uh, knowing where things are is sometimes more valuable than having them. So there may be resources that you don't want to go to. You don't want to carry a lot of stuff with you, but if you have a safe place, you know where it is, keep track of it. But you need to know where those things are that help you survive. Um, and sometimes it's better, like I said. And there are other things you never want to repeat a mistake. If you happen to stumble across where the lion cubs play and you get out of it alive, it would be really good not to push your luck and stumble into the lion cub uh, play area a second time. So, uh, set out exploring. There are two questions as you look around your ever-expanding environment. What do you find and what found you? 
Because you remember, you're not the only one that's looking. Other, there are other things that are maybe looking for you. So let's start out with, hey, we found fish. This is cool. I have something to eat fish. This is cool. I like this fish. Uh, hey, we found fish. This is not quite so cool. Remind me not to go swimming. Um, they are edible. Piranha are edible. But you don't want to catch them with your bare hands. I would not suggest the... Uh, like they have on whatever that high number of cable show is where they stick their hands in and catch bra uh, uh, catfish by their bare hands. Probably not a good way to do it. So what else have we got? We got some berries. This is great. Berries are wonderful. So they don't last long enough. But if you don't trust your water supply, these are full of water that's been purified. This is kind of cool. You got to think a little, you know, beyond the obvious. Take a, a step beyond what the value might be. Something else, if you have a certain bent in life, you might think, hey, these are pretty sweet. If I got enough of them, I could probably get enough uh, berry hooch made uh, to uh, transport me back home because um, that's because there's nothing like not learning from the mistake of what got us in trouble in the first place. Here's one. This is actually not as bad as it looks. These um, these hurt pretty bad apparently, but the great thing is the pain does not last long. This is an Australian rough scaled snake, but really it's got pits here and a forked tongue and it looks, uh, well, Looks like something you wouldn't want to mess with. So uh, remember, they're looking for you too. And when you're looking in the trees, they may be on the ground. So what else? I'm not a big mushroom fan. My wife really loves mushrooms. I like to grill them for her because it makes her happy. And it's one of the few things in life that I do that makes her happy. Um, so that's cool. But you know, you get you do have to have a little bit of knowledge because this porcini would be awesome. You know, those are actually I could I could eat them. Um, these red caps, yeah, that's not so much. If you don't know the difference, you probably need to err on the side of caution. This thing will kill you. But here we go. Oh, now this is this is fantastic. This is just happiness, right? The clover is actually edible. It's tasty. There's a bunch of green things there. And um, for those of you that think that's cute, it is cute, and it's also tasty, especially if you're hungry. Um, if you think that's horrible, just go ahead and eat all the clover and let it uh, eat the clover and fight. But uh, I would suggest maybe getting over the cuteness thing and uh, bashing its little head in and having a meal. Um, <laughs> because you could make some bad assumptions about cute little bunny rabbits <laughs> that can get you in trouble. And, uh, you know, again, watch out. The food could, be, you could become the food instead of the other way around. Uh, but that's, I mean, you're here, starting to get thirsty. We've been walking around. We could find some water. Like I said, those berries look pretty good. This is, uh, I'm not, I'm not so thirsty anymore. Uh, that's great. Oh, this is so much better. Anybody, like, hike in wilderness areas and uh, see nice clear water and freak out and think that's so clean, it's probably full of giardiasis or giardias, so I'm going to probably have to debate whether I want to have the runs like I haven't had since I was in Mexico or uh, dehydrate. And uh, it ends up the same way, but that's a little too graphic. Sorry. But uh, there we go. Uh, what else do we have? What else can we think about here? Uh, be careful of uh, rodents of what we need protection from. 
and what our stuff needs protection. So back to this. Until the real estate developers come and put a sandals or something on it, uh, limited space, limited resources, easy to survey, and another upside, it's highly unlikely that there are large predators living on the island. Need protection from the waves. That's pretty flat. There's not much to slow it down, so we probably don't want to be right on the ground. Uh, it's going to rain a lot, so we need to pay that into consideration. This looks pretty good. I would have put the, uh, the deck over the other end and the sleeping quarters on the tree myself just for a little uh, safety, but, uh, you know, that looks pretty good. It doesn't look bad at all, actually, for uh, um, as long as uh, you don't have neighbors because everything kind of has a, a, an alternate to it. Um, shelter here. This one's different. So, again, we, we there's been water. So it looks like there's a flood season. So if you think you're out of flood season, there are trees, there are things you can make a shelter out of, but there's also mud. Mud makes uh, really good buildings. It's one of the first things we as uh, humans learn. We need some protection from the sun. So this sort of thing, that uh, pretty basic uh, design, this would be uh, very good for us. This would work extremely well. Uh, reliable. Uh, probably need a door. There's probably something in there that, uh, in that area that, might want to uh, share what we have. Here's another one that's great, going back to this uh, this cave. This is awesome. This is pre-built housing, right? This is, this is perfect. Um, unless, of course, you know, that'll even keep us warm through there, but uh, there are other, we're not the only people that like uh, like these kind of caves, and uh, if, this, if this guy lives in there, you could have a problem. Uh, and if this happens to be uh, a mother and the cubs are in there, you have a bigger problem. The great thing is, once again, like that rough-scaled snake, uh, this problem will not last long. It'll hurt, but not for long. Um, so, it needs to protect you. It needs to protect your stuff. We need to protect our stuff. We need room for growth because if we're going to survive, if we're going to move from survival to thriving, we really need to be able to expand what we've got at our available. We need to find resources, be able to pull the resources in, and use them and protect them. And different things, again, need different protection. Um, what does it look like? So a couple of things. One, here's one. Let's talk about fire for a minute. Fire's cool, right? Keeps us warm. Uh, cook and preserve food. Protects us from predators. It's going to provide light. We can dry our food. We can dry clothing. We can dry some building materials. We can signal for help. Fire is just awesome. And again, if you're a vegetarian, I apologize, but that's looking pretty good. I haven't eaten today. Uh, except since breakfast. So that's starting to look pretty good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Fire is wonderful. But um, fire also can destroy everything and take out the house we just built. So fire is horrible. Uh, man, there are no simple answers, are there? It's all about context. Hmm. Crap. Uh, context. And uh, the other one is, uh, if you ever stop looking for the lion that we were looking for when we first landed, it's going to eat you. So the lion may not have been there originally, it may not have been there yesterday, but if it's there this evening, you did. You can't stop looking for the lion. So, always, so always, you know, eternal vigilance or whatever you want to say. We have to keep watching things. I'm ripping through this deck really fast. Um, now, here's one I want to point out. I did not mention people. Because people make things a lot more interesting, even if it's not this gentleman. Um, so what happens? Hmm? There's, there's a story there. That's actually a bouncer at one of the clubs in Salem, uh, Massachusetts, when they were dressed when they dress up for Halloween. Uh, yeah, it's disturbing, isn't it? Yeah. That's, uh, so anyway, what happens if they're people? We didn't talk about people because now you need, like, people skills. And again, well, yeah, look at us. Uh, so uh, we need to talk about that a little bit because it's uh, not a core competency for a lot of us. Uh, here's one that we all think about. Can I trust them? Uh, the one that really screws us up in relationships is not thinking about the flip side of that is can they trust you? Um, and do they trust you? So we often look at these sort of people relationships as, I don't know if I trust him, or, yeah, I trust him. But if we are dealing with people, we have to project that we're trustworthy, at least until we can get whatever we want from them. No, that's, sorry. Um, 
and uh, communications. Can we effectively communicate? Um, and that's not necessarily language. Some of you, uh, I, I'm in an interesting position where I talk to engineers, I talk to vulnerability researchers, I talk to trench level people, I talk to CSOs, I talk to people who do product marketing, and uh, I talk to like people that have my job title but think that it's about the process, not about the product, and it doesn't really matter what you think of it. And we all speak a language that uses the words that are in the English language, but we don't all speak the same language, right? We, we have different languages. So we really need to watch those barriers. And as, um, as technical people, you guys all know this because this is a battle we've fought many times. Um, so this is where we uh, move on. So what happens when we finally get back? We finally get back. And uh, we've learned a few lessons. And as unlikely as it is, we might be able to um, apply these lessons we've learned elsewhere. I cannot believe how fast I ripped through this. I know it's five minutes in. All right, you guys can. Um, you, could, you could apply these lessons elsewhere in life. Nah, not really. Um, well, maybe. So this is, you guys figured this one out. We kind of gave it away in the slide because this is a, a presentation that was originally developed for non-technical people, but actually works extremely well in this environment for showing that we can talk about things without saying icky words like threat modeling, um, asset identification, asset classification, uh, risk analysis, uh, strategic defenses, contextual defenses, you know, vigilance, scope reduction. If it's useless, don't have it. If it's liability, don't have it. Um, it's unlikely that'll actually catch on though, right? That's, that's not possible. Um, so this was not about teleporter accidents. We talked about topics that are frequently boring Pretty much always. Um, I take that back. I, there are none of those risk people here, are there? Risk people. I, I, risk is wonderful. Risk people are great. Please, just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We have plenty of time to go off on that detour. If you long for the good old days of like the Linux kernel mailing list or other really hateful places to go on the internet, um, <laughs> join a risk analysis or risk metrics uh, mail list sometime. Uh, <laughs> pedantry at its best. Uh, so anyway, we talked about topics which are <laughs> which are boring, but without, am I lying? Some, some of you are on one of those risk lists and know exactly what I mean. <laughs> and, they're, and they're all doing metric stuff, and it's good. And if you measure things properly, it's cool. Uh, if you measure things properly, that's great. But a lot of uh, risk metrics are uh, taking a yardstick, holding up to the sky to see how blue it is, things like that. You know, I have a cat. She's fat. She's so fat she weighs 134 miles an hour. Uh, those. <laughs> so anyway, creative presentations. Um, I should have slowed down. Have a little more fun with this one. But uh, one of the things to denote here is this doesn't work for everything. Uh, it works for some things where you're trying to get high-level ideas across. And especially um, if you're trying to do this sort of broad sweep and make people think about things in a little different way and approach a new subject without really drilling into it. Or if you're trying to make a single point storytelling uh, works very well. You know, it makes a point. It, it's, it connects with people. We're humans. That's how humans communicate. The stuff that everybody in this room loves is computer crap. This is on any of those charts in the textbooks of human evolution or whatever scale you want to put it on, if you want to start 2,000 years ago, the length of time we've had digital communications doesn't even register on the scale yet. If you think it goes back millennia, uh, yeah, millions of years, then we're, you know, this is, we're still wired for storytelling. Storytelling works in a digital environment. It's what we are. It doesn't work extremely well. I did make the mistake once of, of saying that, uh, you know, some things can't be done. You'd never do uh, a storytelling style to uh, teach, you know, like the Brothers Grimm, mastering Metasploit by the Brothers Grimm wouldn't work. Unfortunately, HD was in the audience and he said he could do it. And if HD says he can do it, I'm sure he can. Uh, the, re the rest of us can't. Uh, but, <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So uh, with that, um, I actually, like I said, tore through this. And you can go get booze or something before the next one. But that's, uh, that's it. That's surviving a teleporter accident. We talked about things that, without using the icky words until the end, we snuck up on it. 
And you know, think about ways to do that. And if you feel like stealing any of this, it's not stealing. That's the reason we're up here is sharing. And uh, with that, oh, wait. Um, I have a project that I'm working on with a whole bunch of people. Uh, folks in this industry, uh, we don't know how prevalent it is compared to the rest of the world, but people tend to burn out. We tend to drive ourselves really hard, and uh, there's really no point in that because our jobs will drive us really hard if we don't. But uh, the people that are here tend to care more, which means you're more susceptible to burnout. Uh, SEC burnout, S E C B U R N O U T dot org. Uh, is a website that's really crappy and there's nothing there yet, but we're putting some content up. We've got some things going. We did a, a little bit of re really bad research. Um, it turns out it's as good as some of the psychological research out there, but they're psychologists, not statisticians or mathematicians, so they think if the numbers all add up, it's good now. Uh, but we will, uh, if you are interested in that, ping me sometime. I'm easy to find. Uh, or just hit, keep an eye on secburnout.org. We have some more surveys that are going to be coming up and trying to do some real standards and things like that. And we'll be talking about uh, the folks that I'm working with will be talking about that at uh, con near you soon. And with that, I will quit way early.